Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and I just wanted to say I know that there has been a lot, a lot of updates that have come out uh, just in the last three days. The big, big one being the Angeal Limit Break draw and the release of Angeal. He's got a lot of stuff. Obviously, anytime a new character drops, there's always so much to go over. Unfortunately for me, I have been extremely busy with uh, my real life job uh, over the past week and will probably continue to be for a while. And normally this would be a video that I would want to do myself, uh, but I really just have not had the amount of time that it takes to actually get in and go through all of this stuff and test it out to give you guys, I think, the um, kind of review that this deserves. So I'm going to leave this one in Tom Rom's capable hands because I do want um, my channel to put the best information out. So, without further ado, here's Tom Rum. Hey everyone, Tom Rum here. As you saw from Knight, he's not around at the moment, so I'm covering for this video so we can go over what has happened in the game. Let's bring in a bit of background audio for there as well. So, we actually had a bunch of stuff dropping. It isn't just Angeal, but we'll go over everything really quickly so we can get into the the meat of the video, which is the new weapons. Essentially, as you might have guessed, <laughs> when you mentioned about Angel, there is a new unit. Yes, new unit, unit dropped, but that came with some interesting changes. Namely, we actually got a, a level increase. We went from level 80 to 90, which may not seem like a massive amount, but it's interesting that it dropped so soon into year two especially as when we read the Famitsu article, which was essentially the biggest article discussing the changes coming to the game, they mentioned that, hey, there's probably something they're not going to do that often moving forwards. And if they do, it's going to be very uh, carefully chosen when they do it. I guess that's because we are getting very, very close now to level 100, and they kind of want to see where we're going to go with that also we're kind of waiting for level 150 weapons and honestly i can't wait to see that personally so with level 90 we actually had some other introductions and that is in the form of new floors if you have done this so far if you haven't let me just basically explain what's going on on top of the basic 100 floors in battle tower we have some other towers which are I like to call them as memory towers and noble towers. Uh, memory towers are for the lower stuff, and noble towers is like the main focus. It's like one to, one to 100 is the memory towers, but noble towers is the 30, but now 40 floors that allow you to take special memory parts and use them on your stat stream to increase the power of your character. Up until now, we have had a tower for each of the base base units we had an extra tower given to us for vincent and as i will quickly show in a moment we actually have another tower for aunt jill now the thing is they were actually designed to go up to level 80 or 30 floors but with the introduction to 10 new levels we needed to get more memories or more specifically more noble memories this is to allow us to do that and there are some interesting challenges uh, if I just go over and have a quick look for you guys, you can see what we mean. In the battle tower, we have access. You can see I haven't done, done all of them yet. But we have stuff like Galen Balor, Arcana, a noticeably more difficult enemy compared to some of the enemies we've taken on in the game. Cerulean Tower has got... Actually, I don't even know what Cerulean Tower's got. Brilliant Tower's got access to Hell House, an interesting mob that has come from a crash difficulty fight previously. I believe Hell Arcana also may have been a boss that came from a crash before we'd have to get confirmation from someone in the community. Arcana again for the Emerald Tower. So they've given us two bosses. Golden Tower has access to... You'll see what happens when it comes through like that. This is what happens when you haven't clicked on a tower, by the way. Arcana here again. So why they've done it separately for one tower, I'm not actually sure. Uh, I do find that a little bit interesting. 
and for the, for the final tower, it's last number. That is essentially everything that's come to the game. It should be noted that, hey, if you are trying to push noble memories, all three towers here give memories to all 12 units here. However, this tower only gives for Vincent, and this tower only gives to Angeal. This is because they were separate units that came in later. When we get another tower, uh, another character probably going to be Sid, and we're currently predicting that to be in January, we do expect to get one more tower here, and it'll be interesting to see when that comes in. Now, there are some very, very minor stuff extra, but honestly, what you lot care about is this, the unit. It came in with First Soldier, and we actually got a special um, limit break weapon with it. Now, we'll go into it. This is not going to be a banner review per se. However, if people want a video dedicated to the banner review and how that's going to make a difference for guild battle, please put it in the comments below and we will have a look at it. So let's have a look at what's coming to the game or what's come to the game in terms of weapons for Angeal. Now, luckily, those who don't know, because it's a new unit, we can view everything in this bar. But naturally, we have some charts in the background for those who care about it. First weapon is the Type 90 Longsword. Now, we actually got this straight away at OB2 stats, um, mainly because we got to give them three copies, just for getting enough people interacting with the social media campaign. So this data isn't going to be that useful. So let's switch to something that is. Now, this is the Type 91, so the Type 90, there we go. The Type 90 Longsword, it's a physical weapon that will allow us to provide Provoke. Yes, Provoke alongside another skill called Veil are the character specific abilities, at least of right now, for Angeal. This weapon is essentially his free staple. This is the one that's going to be on a uh, weapon that you use if you haven't pulled at all, but they have given us like, I think over 200 tickets, maybe even more. Uh, so I'll be surprised if you only have one weapon for Angeal by this point. He is a 4 ATB physical attack, but as you may see, it comes with a fifth, uh, 62, sorry, points in physical defense. Now it's actually quite a rare substat. This is something we've seen before. I believe it was on Barrett, but to get this amount, is very very rare but when you understand when you look through the kit later on you're going to see that angeal is actually a tank unit and that's going to be something that we're going to see quite a lot at ob1 he does 480 percent damage which when you consider it's 400 and 620 for ob6 that's actually not a bad amount, especially as you can understand this is a tanking unit and it's not designed to do DPS. Uh, at OB2, you get access to 38 points of PDF if it's in the main hand and 14 points in physical ability potency. Now, next in the list is the Type 91 two-hander. This is obviously, as you can imagine, the next step in the weapons. It's actually arguably probably one of these more, more important weapons. This is because, as you can see, 4639, normal standard. Uh, just to ex explain right now, when it comes to S abilities, except for the signature weapon uh, that's come on the banner, you are not going to see any materia slots here. So we're not gonna really worry about this until we get to later on. This is his magic focus weapon with only three ATB. It is a weak weapon. When it gets up to OB1, it is 300%, but it is designed to be a physical attack and magic attack damage down. Uh, both only at mid-potency, I believe, even if it goes up to OB6, you know, P attack goes up to high, but M attack actually only stays at low. We'll switch over just so we can have a bit more of a look at the game, a bit by her numbers. There we go. Now, this is going to be, I believe, actually a weapon that we're going to see 
probably actually on a lot of Angeal builds. If you are a free-to-play player, we'll show this in my personal builds later on, but Angeal has found that... We found that Angeal is actually a really strong weapon if you just want him to do well, and that's because of his HP stat. Uh, Angeal, with his stats, naturally has a little bit higher HP, and that means that we can use that for some of his later skills, such as Veil, which we'll show when we get to it. Now, this is a only 380B, so for Diamond, it is quite nice. And we're going to see probably some interesting use in this, probably in the guild battle, potentially, I think. Now, I do want to note the, what is on the screen. Yes, I on the stats, we don't have everything written down up here. That is because, essentially, we weren't able to get hold of everything. I was trying to get hold of the data to explain, hey, this is what's on the stats, but unfortunately, when they release core weapons, I don't get the information for level 80 or 110, except for max data, which is OB10 at level 120. So we were able to just show where the focus is on the damage instead. So this one's going to be focused on magic attack with a decent smackering of physical attack and a obviously a little bit in heal. It's Diamond Sigil, it's the only weapon that has a sigil built in. Again, though, none of them are going to be having them down here in S abilities. Next weapon is going to be Gargantuan Monolith or the Big Green Sword. Many of us do not even bother to call it its proper name. It's just the Big Green Sword or Mr. Monolith. This is your Provoke weapon. Now, we have, I believe, two weapons that are Provoke, maybe even three, and two weapons that are Veil. And the rest of them are going to be built around support and that lot. Uh, this is going to allow you to do Provide Provoke, which should be noted is always at 60 seconds. We have looked through, we've looked through multiple weapons. All of them only provide 60 seconds and it's never extended, which is quite interesting but it means if it once it falls off you have to attack again you can't extend it you might have a missing period between the two so as it gets towards the end of the 60 seconds you should take note of it additionally provoke doesn't actually lock onto a target or doesn't cause the target to lock onto you anyway if he's already targeted so if he's about to hit if he's targeted onto Aerith and you want him to focus on Angel it's too late you need to cast Provoke before the enemy decides to cast the move so he can then start to lock on to Angeal beforehand. When it's maxed out, it is a 4652, which is this is an amazing tanking stat stick. With 46 points in HP, 52 in magic defense, you're going to find that defense is going to be very useful for this weapon. Not your weapon, just kit in general as Angeal kind of wants always to have physical defense and magic defense in this game. At OV1, it provides just magic defense at 40 seconds with an extension of 13, which is actually reasonably strong, especially when you realize that the extension is the same pretty much all the way through. I actually don't believe this may be entirely correct. No, actually, apparently it's the exact same. It, it's just that the physical health goes up a little bit at OB6. So actually at OB1 and OB6, the M MDEF stays the same except for the potency. And the potency at OB6 is high, but at OB1 it's only at mid. It actually goes from mid to high. It's only 11, 13% uh, potency at OB1, but and 14% at OB6. So actually only taking the difference up is purely for access to our abilities. Now, as you can see, the stats, if we switch back over to the game focus, stats are pretty on board all the way through. The stats will be nice. So this is a weapon that you can put on whether you're going to be using a magic build or a physical build, as you'll see, he has access to both. So this will give you something to work with as you go through. 
And if you want to use this on main hand, because he actually has a physical attack boost, magic attack boost, and then a flat attack boost, you can attach materia on and it will again be completely versatile. And this weapon, because of Veil, vale, will shine so hard. Let's have a look at the next weapon. Uh, let's see if I can get through. And the game, of course, everything's frozen. There we go. Shinra Greatsword Model 1. As you might have seen with some of these weapons, they are very much based off the names of other weapons we've got in the game, simply around the Shinra Corporation, mainly because Sephiroth exists and is around the same time period. This is your Earth Breach weapon. If you were here for Vincent's launch or just play Vincent at all and you know the weapon Chiron, this is essentially the same weapon, except I believe Chiron is magic focused, where this one is attack focused. Or physical focus at 390% at basis, going up to 450 at OB1. Wrong button. 550% at OB6 and 620% at OB10. Now you may have noticed this is our very first veil weapon. Now I'm not going to worry too much about the fact of it's an earth breach because Everybody here knows how an Earth Breach works. Use it, it's going to be mid to high. And as you get to OB6, it's going to be high to high. It's the usual standard type of breach that we get in the game. What I do want to point out is Veil. The way that Veil works is it essentially gives you actually another health bar. It will go just above your main health bar of your character. And it is for the duration of however long it's going to be on the skill. I believe it's the exact same on every single weapon in the game for Veil, which means at OB0, it is 40 seconds, at, and 5%. At OB1, it is 45 seconds and 6%. Also, 8% seconds extension OB0, 9%, uh, 9 seconds at OB1. At OB, I believe I may have this actually written, uh, no, written correctly, here we go, 10 seconds at OB6 in a 50 second duration with 8%. And at OB10, it is a 10% potency veil at 60 seconds with a 12 second extension. I know that's a lot of numbers, but just remember, veil is the same on every version of the weapon currently as long as it runs. However, the veil that's applied through Limit Break, as we'll show later on, is does run on a different potency. Now, this weapon isn't anything that special, to be perfectly honest. It is simply nothing more than a Earth Breach that has a pretty bit of veil, which is probably going to be the main reason you use it. It is a physical attack, so it's nice to bring if you just need for veil and to boost some attack up. It does come with a nice smackering of buff and debuff extension. And again, just really basic S ability stats. The numbers aren't exactly anything special to look at for DPS. But honestly, if you're going to use this weapon, you're probably not using it for DPS. You're using it as an earth resist and as a veil weapon to go through. The magic attack for this is quite low, especially in comparison to physical. So this is specifically for your physical attack users. After this, actually, uh, I should probably mention that OB1, it is 29 points to boost attack and 15 points to buff extension at 110. Or if you're not going to level it at all, it's just 27 points and 12 points to buff extension. Enough to give you to level 2 at, uh, if it's on secondary hand, at OB0. And if you're at OB1 in main hand, it's enough to get up to level 3 in buff extension, which is quite useful when you consider it's 80% and as a breach weapon. After Shinra Greatsword Model 1, we have Sequoia Don. Uh, or Sequoia Dendron. If I can click on the correct weapon, this is its partner in crime. Sequoia Dendron is the Earth Potency weapon in physical damage that can go up to 1200% damage if your HP is lower than 30%. Now, 
most people would be thinking, well, it's less than 30% HP. I don't like that. Well, remember, this is Angeal. Angeal has access to Veil, which means he essentially has between 5 to 10% more HP, max HP, than he does, uh, any other character does. So you can build around wanting to be really useful, actually, later on. Now, this weapon actually can be used on a couple of different ways, mainly because 52 points in Earth Potency, which you're not going to worry too much about it being level 6. Actually, you should probably think of it as 25 points. And I'll explain why in a moment, which is 40% Earth damage. And that's because this makes a great stat stick for units like Yuffie, who has Shinobi Hawk and has a physical Earth build. Now, you can use this on Angeal, and it probably will be useful later as they've gone out of their way to give us a breach and an elemental weapon of the same type together. When you get into just OB1 data, we are looking at around 27 points for physical attack, boosting up to 29 at OB1, and then 16 points for Earth Potency, boosting to 20 points at OB1. Now, that means because it is a late bloomer, it doesn't actually get a high amount of earth boost until it gets to beyond OB7. So you should try and take that into consideration if you want to build this weapon. It's probably something that you're going to build naturally. So unless you really want it, I actually I wouldn't worry too much about this weapon, but it's going to be quite nice as you go through. As um, You can prep for an earth build that are probably going to come up, I'm guessing... So we get into the beginning of next year, looking at the elements that are coming up in the game. After Sequoia Dendron, we have Innocent Warrior. Now, if Earth was based on Sequoia Dendron, this is your fire weapon. Magic fire, again, this is going to be a very weak weapon, but it's because it's AOE. This is at 280% at OB0, going up to 340% damage at OB1. 440% at OB6 and 520% damage at OB10. Now, I wouldn't worry about the stats it really brings outside of 609 points in Magic Attack is quite nice at OB10. And instead, I would focus on the fact of what this weapon can bring to your account. With it being a magic weapon, which means magic attack and fire potency at 52 points. Again, that means level four straight away at ob10 this is a great stat stick for units that like tifa with her i believe her shelled knuckles as the weapons work together it means that you can have a really strong fire weapon now it's probably we're not going to be using fire weapons too much going into the next couple of months mainly because the next summon that we're going against is ifrit and the one after that is titan where neither of them are at least one of them definitely isn't going to be weak to fire. So if you are able to work on this as a background, again, really nice. There's nothing really special about this weapon. It's, again, magic back boost. There's nothing maybe much I can say about it to say it's worth going for. I should probably note, though, there is only 31 points in the primary R ability. Because of that, you definitely do not want to be trying to put this on a main hand of building for a magic attack unless, one, you really need a fire unit who can tank, who can do fire damage, or you have got it above OB6, simply because the stats on this is going to be quite low. Like, you max out over two-thirds of the points at the point of level 120 on base five-star. So just take that into consideration when you're building this weapon. What have we got next? Well, we have got Stalwart Integrity. Arguably one of the most hyped weapons we have. Uh, for those who have remembered Kinner Megaphone, that came from the Fire Factory 9 banner, well, welcome to the permanent edition of that weapon, also known as Kimura Blade. Stalwart Integrity is a weapon that we've been waiting for the game to come into as in for the permanent banners pretty much since Monster Hunter. 
Uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't do magic defense, but you'll get into it. This is a physical defense on all allies from mid to high until it hits OB6, where it's going to go straight up to high, pure level. It's then a magic heal, which honestly, you don't care about the magic heal, I can tell you right now. But if your health is above 70% or more, you get access to physical attack up at mid to high potency. Now, this sounds familiar because it is Kimura Wand. It's Kimura Wand that happens to do physical defense instead of magical. And as you saw at OB6, it's high and high again. This is an amazing weapon. I don't think I can even begin to explain how important the community this weapon is. Because we're now going to be able to make stuff. And if you weren't around for Monster Hunter, I can tell you right now, a lot of RF builds ever since Monster Hunter Banish dropped have used Kimura ones. This is a weapon that not only is... I would say one of the top kits for Angeal, I would say it's probably a weapon that you're going to want in your wish list until it hits OB6 at an absolute minimum. Now, part of that is actually due to the HP stat going up 62 points. Now, no one's going to be using it in its main slot, let's be honest. But that is 31 points, because if you don't know, if it goes in a back slot or a sub slot, it's half the potency. That gives you enough of 45% plus 250 HP. This is amazing. I, honestly, I cannot begin to explain how important this weapon is. This should be noticed that there are some differences. One, I don't remember exactly how Kimura One's uh, buff extension works, except for I know it has one. One, this is a 6226 weapon, which means you're only going to get 13 points at OB10, so it's not even enough to get to level 3 by itself. Two, this does not have a cure all slot. So you cannot use this unit as a healer with this weapon, but you can use it as a buff extension. And again, think of it as a tanking weapon. This allows you to reduce the physical attack down so you can tank attacks better especially when hp is sat there and your hp is going to be sat incredibly high as you can see physical and magical attack are pretty much equal so again this is another weapon that doesn't matter if you are building towards a physical attack boss or a magic attack boss with what you need to use you can equip this on either build and it's going to be very useful Note that this skill icon here, it might sound very minor, but this skill icon is actually the same or near the same as the ultimate weapon for this unit. And it means that you need to pay attention. If you're just one of those, you look at an icon, you know what to press. Just pay attention. I know it's not a chance because they are different sides of the screen, but just understand that, yeah, it, it is incredibly simple. Now, there's probably more we can go into this weapon, but... Honestly, for now, until I can show you how the weapon works on a build, not much we can really go into. Except for at one, level 110, boost HP is going to be up at 36 points, and I believe that's 40 points at 120. Yes. If you level it up to OB1, it's going to be 38 points, and at 10 points... Or buff extension. So this is the level that I would recommend every single person gets this to minimum. OB1 stalwart integrity. Simply because 20 seconds on physical defense up and 20 seconds on physical attack up is very, very good. And it's the same recommendation we actually made for Kimura Wand. OB6 is where we recommend you get to minimum. OB1 should be the minimum. Uh, that you should be to really use this weapon you can use it on a lower level but go for it if you don't feel like using angel this is also another weapon that i would just level at base five star because of the how high the boost hp is this allows players to go through and just have a decent back end that you can just put on especially from a healer point of view if you put this on at level 120 there's still 20 points or 30% HP 
and four points, which, okay, it's not enough to get your buff extension up, but you're probably putting on a heal buff extension weapon on your healer already. And this is going to be quite useful for keeping your Matt or Aerith alive, maybe even Barrett alive, later in other fights. Next up, we have CC Ally, Ally Sword. This is your standalone lightning weapon. It's honestly, there's not a lot special about this weapon, except for the fact of it is a 62 point in magic attack. Now, I mentioned that's quite useful because it means at a base five star, this is a 500%, but 40 points in magic attack weapon. You can use this as a stat stick if you just needed to push some magic attack really quickly because at 20 points, as you can see, 15%, but that's 20 points towards anyone's back end. Just by having one copy of this weapon, having it at OB1 lets you get it up to 38 points at 110. And that in main hand is enough to get to 30%. And on back end, that is 15 plus 4, 19 points. And that gets you incredibly close to level 4, which most players are going to be at level 5 and above for their builds anyway. Now, at OB1, this does 600% damage. OB6, 740. And at OB10, it's 900% damage. There's not much else to really say about this weapon. I do recommend trying to build it up. Lightning is something we find that is quite useful against bosses, or just against content in general in this game. I do think that this is a weapon that people are going to enjoy as they go through the game. After CC Alloy Shield, we have Great Sword A, also known as Great Sword and Jill. This is a veil weapon again this is essentially just a very simple but honestly probably standard weapon for angel going into the game this is a weapon that can go all the way up to 540 percent physical damage but does pdf down on mid to high at base level and then high throughout from ob6 onwards now you probably saw that this is actually a 52 points in physical attack potency, but only 31 points in base physical attack. So naturally, this is a weapon that, again, likes being at OB7 or above. But the main thing we're using this for is actually probably going to be Veil. Again, it puts on a bit of Veil, and at PDF down, I've seen a lot of builds putting this, using this on as a secondary slot just to increase stats, because if you have a look at the stats, 624 points is quite a lot. ATB4 is nothing really special, but it's nothing really to mock at either, especially when you consider it does a decent amount of defense down and a decent amount of veil at all levels. Again, base level 5%, but for 40 seconds and extends. This is a weapon that's going to be useful it's entirely built around tanking and staying alive like your tanks are going to still want to damage the enemy or want at least your dps to damage the enemy so this is where this weapon comes useful because it can bring their defense down and let your other dps who you're taking the damage for do their job and do their job even better because they haven't got to try and stay alive because this unit is tanking it for you now again go through at ob1 it is 18 points to physical attack and 16 points to physical ability potency going up to 19 and 20 points at ob1 so it is a weapon that likes to be at ob1 and above ob7 if you really want to have access to physical ability potency to really shine but that's all we can really say about this weapon after greatsword we have the the prime weapon that we wanted to talk about tranquility tranquility is the special limited weapon this is the weapon that came out because we got a new unit in the game with specifically being angel it's a limit break banner as you can probably guess physical attack all allies and water potency now you might wonder where that sounds familiar that's because this at least our ability wise 
is the same weapon as Glenn from Stream Slasher. Now, as it gets to OP10, it actually does 40% more damage compared to Glenn's weapon. However, Glenn has another weapon called Slay the Day, which is a water buffing weapon where Tranquility doesn't have a support weapon in this game. At least not for Angel yet. However, what this weapon does bring is it is the only weapon for Angel that is both a provoke and a veil. Yes, this unit, this weapon can do both and pretty damn fast. When we've tried using it and just clarification, I've pulled this weapon to OB2, I think. Maybe OB1, OB2. Um, this weapon can constantly pump out, provoke and veil and just keep it going and that keeps them alive. Honestly, is such a game changer. Now, unlike every other weapon that he owns, because he is a limit break weapon and has be attack at all, he comes with a sigil boost. Sigil boost triangle. So if you put it on there, you can do up to five sigil materia counts per hit of materia, which is quite nice. Now, at base die, it is only 520%. But as you can see on the screen, it goes up to 620% if you get it to OB1, which personally, if you're going to pull this weapon, OB1 again is a minimum. I've had weapons, and I think I've got a weapon somewhere where it's a X attack all, all allies at level 110, 120 base five star. 30 points doesn't feel like a lot, simply because it's not. It's a nice amount. It's like 15 points straight away. But I don't like having to rely on getting up to 110 at uh, 120 because ingots are really expensive. At one t at OB1, you can take it to 110 because it gets a two point extra boost and it will still do the same thing. So at 110, you can just make it a back slot, take it to 110 and it's level 15 level three sorry 15 points of physical attack all to all allies now with this weapon it comes with a partner in the form of an outfit uh, so you can see i actually have pulled this already but on the last page of every page you have the honorable training garb let's switch over the screen so you can actually see this just the game this comes with a water blade arcanum which, as you can imagine, is very, very useful for the Angel, and comes with a boost defense or allies. This is actually a new R ability to the game, and it's the only unit to come with it. When putting it on, it's a 5% increase to physical defense and magic defense of all allies. Now, we have tested this out. It is interesting that it comes with this, especially when you consider... Every single piece of kit he's going to do is going to want him to push it up as high as possible. And we've actually found that him wearing this outfit can help other units. You can build him as a pure DPS, which is pure water DPS, and then not care about this ability for him. And instead be like, hey, I need, you know, I need my Barrett to be the strongest tank in the game for me. That's fine. Putting this on helps Barrett, especially as you know you can put him on his physical defense and magic defense outfit which i believe is his indomitable soul or his purple electro cannon outfit but having both the units on means that he's still doing his water damage at dps grade and you can build him up quite strong when you want to anyway and then your tank can still tank higher because you're wearing this outfit. Now, as always, when we get new units, there are a couple of other places that we can get some outfits. Well, not outfits, some weapons. So let's have a look at what else came in. Orchard Shovel, this is his guild weapon. Now, it's nothing special. It's the usual lower the HP, the higher the ability potency, three times 
so 630 uh, 630% at base but again trying to get down to 30% not really good but it is a earth resist with p defense all allies no surprise it's a defense boost that's quite nice for the game um, but it's interesting because earth resist with p def all allies is probably something that we're going to want for december and specifically for titan release so this is a weapon to just think about as we get to when it maxes out it goes to 490 percent which is a just shy of 1500 percent so 1470 at a 10 percent crit chance single target if your health is lower than 30 percent but again it comes with provoke which is a nice little boost on top of that we actually got an ultimate weapon for him on base this is obviously a, the base weapon that we get as every other unit gets ultimate type 90 longsword this is a pdf weapon and an mdef which is a mid to high at 20 seconds with an extension of 20 seconds and also comes with 20 points to pdf and 20 points to mdef as you can kind of see he's kind of built around staying alive the stat points let's just switch to max so you can don't worry about what might have is practically identical it's only one point difference heal is not important i would recommend that if you're going to brand this make the most of it and put on mdef and pdef we haven't spoken about brands for everything else because honestly you do what you want with them but since this is a defense unit i do recommend for this one weapon to double down on it and try and get mdef and pdef stat uh, stats on your brandings for this one specific weapon now that's a showcase of everything i apologize for the length of the video it's just because this is a lot to go through but let's have a quick look at how the weapon or the unit looks from a showcase point of view now this isn't a perfect angel i've still got more to work on just to be clear this is only at 353 nodes as you can see it's already a 5000 hp block um i haven't even got all my limit breaks and my collection allows me 11.9 percent boost to hp and everything else like 8.8 .8 and 6.8 which is a quite a nice little base and that's just simply eight percent in eight points for physical defense and six points in magic defense everything else is basically the same so this is what a built and jill could kind of look like i've put on something to give him hp now he doesn't need this weapon i could give him probably one of his own weapons um, but honestly i just wanted to test out what we could do because his limit breaks which i'll just explain very briefly afterwards actually supports having a really strong unit and also i kind of find that the damage from this is quite nice now i've got radiant edge on just because it's a high physical attack and it's my best physical attack boost weapon in the game i've got maritime sword on because it's my highest for water potency right now and I've got on a level 120 Greatsword A and a level 120 Tranquility. You can see the stats aren't the best, but again, this is a single unit. It's not even built into a team, but with 13,000 health. So for context at 10%, if this was OB10, that'd be 130 Veil or 1,300 Veil. And that's a lot. Obviously, it could be better. It can go higher, actually, if you use this ability here. This is his OB uh, LB3. We'll go through them really quickly afterwards, but LB3 actually does 20% of your veil for all targets. Which, just for context, again, I said this is a 1,300 shield at 10%. That's 2,600 just for being Angeal because he's got an HP weapon on. If it was 11,000 or 10,000, that's to be 2,000 HP. If it was a 10,000 HP weapon or HP uh, units, just for built, being existing. Honestly, that's not bad. And it's honestly really strong. The magic heal is nice, but again, nothing really special about that. The thing we're caring about is actually the veil here. 
The second one is if you've ever played Red 13 and you slow fang, it's this, except AoE edition. Yeah, it's physical attack and magic attack down, all allies, or enemies, sorry, at 800 charge speed. Really strong. Duration is quite nice as well at 21 seconds. But this, this is, um, this is a little bit nutty. This is Heavy Assault, which I only got at level 5 at the moment, but has over, I think it's believe it's 2,100% physical and magical damage if it's at level 10. Now, why is that so important? Well, it has the lower HP, higher ability potency skill, which means if you're at 30% HP or less, this does 6,000 or 3,000. Uh, yeah, 6,300 percent damage at level 10, which is higher than I believe every single summon in the game. I believe maybe, just maybe, um, Bahama breaches that, but as of right now, that is an unbelievable amount of damage when you consider that this is a tank unit. So let it let it block stuff for you. Let it get its health down, get its ability ready, and just watch it slap. Just watch it just completely destroy everybody. Now, what does this unit look like in a team, you may wonder? Well, let's have a quick look over. This is the wrong team. Let's go and look at my team I've built for a guild, a guild event later. When he's built up, he looks about the same this is obviously a more aggressive and actually more dps focused angel at only 9000 health but it's 7400 physical attack and if i was just to switch this out to something like you know, monolith they go up to 10,000. chuck that on it's only a loss of 400 but it's 12,000 percent health at uh, 12,000 health it's still a very very strong weapon it still allows you to do many things. If you chuck on something like Mighty Long Sword, you can see over 200 super easy. Like, I haven't got on weapon, stuff that's actually pushing a lot. I've got five points of physical defense here, uh, 10 points there, which is nice. But again, I'm only using it because of the physical attack. But this one, this is a actual stat stick I carry around, but it's actually my HP stat stick. You can see that. Nothing I've got here is actually trying to push magic defense or physical defense really high. I've built them because of whether it's HP or it's because it's my physical attack stat. Obviously, having a defense was a nice little bonus. These are like these are the, my best two physical attack weapons uh, materials. This is my best HP material that happens to have a triangle slot on it. I have one that's better for triangle, but you can see. Like halfway down on all of these, I could have put much, much better materia that is physical defense. Probably even better if it was magic defense, to be perfectly honest. And I'm set at 180 to 190 defense as standard. And that is partially because these weapons are built for keeping me going. And they are, this character in general is built for keeping you running and very, very strong. What else can you really say? Well, I think that's kind of it for the unit. Obviously, we could go into more. I could show more on how to build it, but I feel like this has been a almost 50 minute video. I apologize for the length of it. As you can see, there's so much to go through. And if you put up with it this long, I applaud you. My voice is very monotonous and it's a lot to go through. Tell me what you think of the unit. Tell me if you've built him up all the way do you like him? Do you dislike him? How do you feel about the fact that we've got a, essentially a support unit instead of a DPS unit like we've gotten for the last three to four units? Do you think that you're going to want to use him a lot in the game or only when you need to? And uh, let me know how I did for the video. Again, apologies that it wasn't night covering this. It had to be me for this one, but... One, I have access to posting for this, which makes my life easier, Night's life easier, but also because nights are very busy at the moment and probably won't be around until probably towards like the end of the month, beginning of next month. Uh, 
we'll go over anything we need to for it probably if there is another banner it will be me again so just making people aware that if it drops before probably anniversary it potentially is going to be me uh, we'll see what we can we'll see if we can get some other people to join on and talk about the weapons if you want a more advanced guide on Angeal and actually how to build him and how to use his different combinations of weapons in different kits, let us know in the video in the comments below and we'll get together three or four members from the Nightlight Guild and discuss it in an open video showing all different ways that we can do this. It's been Tom Rum. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking out for the full 50 minutes and have a lovely time. Take care and goodbye.